The second type of learning theory that we're going to be examining today is operant conditioning, otherwise known as instrumental conditioning. Instrumental conditioning was founded by B.F. Skinner, an American psychologist, and he was concerned with the link between the stimulus and response in a similar way to classical conditioning. However, with operant conditioning, what they are most concerned about are the consequences of your behaviour. So I think you've all experienced operant conditioning many times before. This is when you change your behaviour uh, because of a reward that you're trying to receive or a punishment that you are trying to avoid. It could be a simple, something as simple um, as doing what your parents tell you because you don't want to be punished. Or it could be going back to your favourite restaurant because the food taste, um, tasted amazing and that is a, an exceptional reward. Um, it could be your friends praising you for the new dress, uh, which is a reward. So you go out and buy more dresses of that similar fashion. In a marketing sense, uh, with instrumental conditioning, trial often precedes liking. So we trial the food and then it tastes great and that's the reward. Um, and then the response is that we're going to keep going back to the restaurant. Or we try that new brand of shoes. Uh, but they're terrible and that is the punishment. Um, and so the result uh, that we learnt, what we have learned, is not to buy those shoes again. The reverse is often true with classical conditioning. So product sampling, what you see in the mall, where they're giving out samples of uh, perfumes um, or little food samples would be an example of this type of learning. So when I was in the mall last, um, I received a very, very small packet of Kellogg's Body Smart. It's a type of cereal, um, and I found that to be a nice little reward in itself. So I received a reward uh, from Kellogg's, which was nice. That reward, they, you know, they actually achieved the desired response. I consumed the cereal. Okay, then when I consumed the cereal, uh, I got some reinforcement, another reward. Okay, the cereal tasted great. You know, that's amazing, that's really good. Um, and because of that positive reinforcement, it's more likely that I'm going to buy the cereal the next time around. Hopefully, um, you know, then I, I continue to eat the cereal uh, and things happen further on. Now, just because of that one instance of trying the product might be not enough for me to change the brand of cereal that I like to buy. You know, I, I always buy my same brand of cereal. Am I going to make the change because of that one small experience? So marketers often engage in what is called shaping. So shaping is where we're trying to um, shape people's behavior uh, through baby steps. So you're engaging in operant conditioning, but small steps at a time. So for example, you know, I consumed the free sample of Kellogg's Body Smart. Uh, I felt it tasted great. Uh, and that was a reinforcement. Um, and next time I'm in the mall, I go to buy my normal cereal, but I see that a box of Kellogg's Body Smart is on special. So I get to buy the, the, the cereal on sale. And now that's another reinforcement. I'm getting another reinforcement. I'm getting a, a bargain. Um, you know, so then I eat more and it tastes great. That's more reinforcement. Uh, and now I've been eating the cereal for a month and I'm starting to feel fantastic. I'm starting to feel uh, much better, healthier, thinner. And now that um, is another reinforcement. So I'm getting all these reinforcements, lots of little baby steps along the way. Uh, and because of that, next time I'm in the store uh, and I see Kellogg's Body Smart, um, I'm willing to buy it at full price. Okay, um, so my, my behavior has been shaped in baby steps uh, to get me to buy that product. Uh, so for instrumental conditioning to work, um, we're really concerned about the consequences of your behavior. Um, so there's really three different types of consequences that can occur. Um, so far I've talked about positive reinforcements. Um, so, you know, that takes really good. Um, and I've talked about punishments uh, so that tastes bad um, or, you know, oh, you, you look really terrible in that. Um, or um, uh, another example would be um, the government trying to change your behaviour through a punishment, uh, like giving out parking fines. Um, or there's also a negative reinforcement. So we would consider a negative reinforcement 
um, the termination of aversive stimulus. So um, the removal of something bad. So it's kind of like a, a reward, but it's a, the removal of something that is, is bad. So the termination of aversive stimulus, for example, uh, you have a headache which is bad, um, now then you take the, the Panadol and that bad thing has gone away because you took the, the, the aspirin or the Panadol or the, the medicine.